Life with the Fellowship of Joy. I had a terrible night of dreaming. Ordinarily, I can work these things out before I wake up. I can resolve my dreams to some extent, and I do that as I dream them, and then I wake up with some sort of peace about them. Not so this morning and last night. It was a time to get up, and all I felt was a sense of longing to get this silly, endless loop of a dream resolved. As it turned out, that sense of longing was the missing piece to what I bring today to what I thought was a well-prepared sermon for this morning. What's missing is what was missing. That sense of longing, it was the unifying theme. And so with a sense of longing, with a sense of expectation, with a sense of hope, I invite you to pray with me this morning on this first Sunday of Advent. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There will be signs. All of our Christian holidays and calendars are kind of like signs. They were created by human beings who were longing for God, for meaning, for community, and for some sort of order in their thinking. They're based upon the Bible and written revelation, but they're not mandated, and they're not essential to the faith. You can practice them. You can disagree about how to practice them. You can experiment with them, or you can ignore them completely and still be a Christian. But they're useful tools for meditating on meaning, for gathering as community, for ordering our thoughts, teaching our doctrine, and mostly for pointing us to God through their symbols and their stories. I choose to use them as propellants. The traditional theme of the first Sunday of Advent seems to be longing. That may not be a word most theologians would use, but today it seems to be the meaning behind the meaning and the message itself. We're longing for the judgment of Christ wrapped up in the second coming. We're yearning or resolution. Creation itself, of which we are a part, longs for God in Jesus to wrap things up, settle the questions, and separate the sheep from the goats, whether we be sheep or goats or a little of both. We grow weary of being stuck in revolving doors or elevators that never go anywhere. We're tired of walking the same halls and asking the same questions. We move toward Christmas with longing. We know somewhere inside that we cannot make sense of things ourselves or resolve things ourselves. We cannot make things work. We cannot sort them out. We cannot solve the problems. We cannot save ourselves. It will take an incarnation of God disclosing himself to us to the last and final resolution. So we begin Advent looking for signs that there is a hope of a final judgment that will set all the wrong things right. There will be signs. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory, Jesus says in Luke 21, 27. Days of fulfillment. Jeremiah says, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Judah and the house, uh, the house of Judah. <laughs> and in those days... And at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, 
and you shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called the Lord is our righteousness. Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. The kingdom is near. Hear the gospel this morning of which we've read an excerpt. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars on earth. Nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighted down with carousing, drunkenness, and anxieties of life, and that day will close on you suddenly like a trap, for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 25 through 26, New International Version. In these words, Jesus describes the time from the moment he addresses his disciples to the moment he comes again to redeem them from this earth. Some of the statements he make, makes require some thought, meditation, explanation. Others stand alone, and any reader can interpret them. And there shall be signs. They start immediately. Signs always tell you something. They point to a greater reality or a direction farther down the road. Jesus does not leave us without signs that we can relate to that relate to our human experience and our common experience and every other experience. One is men's hearts failing them for fear. Expect it. Notice it. Don't let it stop you. Don't be the one whose heart fails from fear. You're aligned with the fearless one who casts out all fear. The powers of heaven will be shaken. Good, they need to be shaken. They respond to the thunder of God's presence. As vast as the cosmos is, God is greater. Look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draw up nigh. Well, this is the great message of everyday Advent. Redemption gets closer with every passing moment. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. We shall see, and they shall see. All shall see. That brings joy, relief, vindication to all who have seen only through the eyes of faith and hope. This generation shall not pass away till all is fulfilled. This is a bit of a mystery, but it also comes as a simple truth. Wars, rumors of wars, trouble, persecution, signs in heaven and on earth came immediately to Jerusalem and to the church. Even foretaste of the coming of Jesus was made visible in his death and his resurrection and ascension. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. This is what we must remember Always cherish and speak of this hope. Watch ye therefore and pray always. This is what we must do. Never stop. Never stop watching. Never stop praying. Because summer is nigh. You see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise, when you see these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is nigh. 
at hand. Springtime is a precursor of summer. Every flower and bud and encourage us to wait just a little longer for meaning, for hope, for resolution, for judgment, for truth. Vacation's coming. Summer often means vacation. Soon there will be uh, picnics and trips to the coast, long days by the pools, lazy nights on a hammock, and all the wonderful tastes and smells of summer. At least that's the summer of our dreams. We don't think about mosquitoes and perspiration, stepping on bees and humidity. Did someone forget to tell the boss that summertime is one long vacation? Maybe this is a time for a reality check. <laughs> Maybe it isn't. Maybe this is a time that's better spent experiencing the swelling excitement of spring and the anticipation of summer fantasies, even right now as we're beginning to have winter, because they remind us of a far more fulfilling and assured blessed hope. Jesus used the illustration of a budding spring to remind us of our future hope, and we're doing it right here in Advent. A couple of weeks before the uh, longest or the shortest day of the year, it's the hope of the redemption of the whole earth and endless summer with no humidity and no parasites and no overheating. It's the hope of the end of evil and the reign of righteousness. It's the hope of his coming and his coming kingdom of peace and truth. As I grow older, I want more truth. I want the good truth. I want the bad truth. I want the hard truth. I want the easy truth. I want the reassuring truth. I just want truth. Whether the truth looks good in a mirror or it looks ugly in a mirror, I want the truth. I just long for things to be resolved. The lion will lie down with the lamb. Swords will be beaten into plowshares. We will sing a new song. No eye has seen what God has prepared. No ear has heard it. No tongue has confessed it. The kingdom of God is nigh at hand, and we have no concept of how wonderful it is going to be. This is our blessed hope, beloved. Let the excitement build. Let the chimes ring. Let every voice be lifted in praise to him. He comes in glory. He comes to reign. Hallelujah. The king is coming. The king is coming. It takes us to our psalm for the day, Psalm 25. It's my response to God. The longing for truth prompted by this psalm. It's prompted by this hope. It's prompted by this longing. Read the psalm, by the way. I'm not reading it right now. I'm reading my prayer. My prayer in response to Psalm 25. You'll have it in the comments. I cannot see far into the distance, God. Twists and turns lie before me. I know there's a path. I can see its beginning. I cannot see where it goes beyond tomorrow. Yet. I run, I leap, I fall, I plunge into the mystery. I do not need to know it all. Certainty with redundancy has lost its radiance. It retains no power to attract my heart. Mystery envelops divinity, and divinity envelops mystery. Into that cloud, I must go without hesitation, in trepidation. I shall be at home there, drawn to thee. By thee, I cannot tell you what I shall find, nor can I describe what I see there. I cannot tell you how or why I know, except that in thy embrace I am known. And the love that has taken hold of me has held me tightly in the grip of mercy. And being there and going there and sensing that destiny, I can somehow remain here, and be here, living on purpose in community of fellow travelers, I celebrate the joy of another world. 
a world that makes sense of this world. I believe it, God. I believe in thee, even when thou art silent. And I rest in that peace that passes understanding, so I take the first step on this path that thou hast set before me. Step one, that is all that thou hast asked of me in Jesus' name, amen. Thomas Merton said, the biggest human temptation is to settle for too little. Don't. We do not have to be understood by everyone. We do not have to be popular. We do not have to be validated by everyone. We must be consistent and integrated, which is the heart of integrity. We must be faithful to the calling we have received from on high, and occasionally we must be brave. We must also be kind and generous with those who do not see things as we do, but our kindness and just generosity may not and sometimes must not take the edge off our words. Most of us need to be taken to the edge from time to time to see the larger view. And so the psalmist says in Psalm 25, make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. There is the heart of longing, the heart of the beginning of Advent, the longing for the resolution, for the coming of the master, the king, the judge, the truth teller, and the truth maker, the one who is the truth. In 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13, which is the epistle for the day, Paul expresses the peace that he has about the community of faith of which he is a part. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before God because of you night and day? We pray most earnestly that we may see your face, may see you face to face and restore what is lacking in your faith, to which I pause and say we have some things lacking in our faith that express themselves in our longing that we turn toward faith with so that that longing becomes a loving prayer to God. And I continue back with Paul. Now may, we're, may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. We have a longing and we have a community and we have a meaning and we have a moment to reflect upon all of these things and experience that longing together with some fear, with some trepidation, with some wonder. Will I be worthy? Will I be ready? But I say to you this, there's nothing but the longing and the one to whom the longing leads that can make us ready and prepared and holy enough and righteous enough to receive that. There's a wonderful, beautiful Christmas hymn. We're going to try to sing it together today. It's we, I think I may have it worked out so that we can, but we're going to try. Lo, how a rose air blooming of tender shoot has sprung. Lo, how a rose air lifts. Well, let's start it from the beginning. How about it? Oh, how a rose there blooming from an stem as blessed seeds lineage and a bowl of song. It came a flower bright, a maid 
Well, that gives me some hope that we can work some of that out to sing hymns together, perhaps from time to time. But it gave us a start, didn't it? And you know, in Advent, a start is enough. It gets us to the next place. And that's what this inkling of hope expressed in longing does for us this morning. If you woke up with longing, with questions, with perplexities this morning, with a sense of unresolved angst or unresolved questions in your life, good. Good. Ponder these things. Take that long, longing to God through the incarnation and redemption and reconciliation that is in Jesus Christ and say, yes, Lord, yes, to all that you have for me, for all that's in store, to the blossoming fig tree, to the hope for which I long, for the truth that I'm ready to embrace about myself and the world and you, to the perplexities and the unknowns, to the confusions, but to the hope, to the life, to the love, to the forgiveness, to the grace, to the mercy. Yes, I don't understand it all, but I open my hands, my arms to embrace it, that I may be embraced by your embrace this day. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace, peace, peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And amen. And amen. Again. <laughs>